this podcast is part of the Pull Up a Chair Podcast Network. Let's build community through connection, conversation, and collaboration. This podcast is sponsored by Elever Consulting, editing with a purpose. Check them out at eleverconsulting.com for a free consultation. I'm Sarah. And I'm Scooter. Thanks for pulling up a chair with us. We are not experts on any of these topics, but we are hoping to spark something. Like an idea, a conversation, or even a revelation. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's Let's talk talk about about stuff. stuff. Yeah. I am fired up. That zero sleep. Hello. Zero sleep makes you fired up? Yeah. I'm just running on fumes. (laughs) Gross. I know. Isn't that what an adult is? I don't know. I feel like an adult. Well, an adult parent. I don't know. Let's yeah. Get out of this. Well, welcome. Hello. We're we're here and we're gonna chat at you. Yes. Because you don't you can't really chat back. So not right now. Welcome. 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 Uh, across from me here today is <gasps> the infamous, notorious <gasps> Sarah. Am I? That's exciting. You are across from me. Yes. Oh, okay. Across from me. There's a lot of posters, but also Scooter. There's a lot of posters? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there is a few. Yeah. There's a few back there. Well, welcome. We're, we're going to do some uh, chatting. Let's see what we come up with here. We do have an episode uh, ready, but before we do that, what do we got to do? Good things. Good thing. That is true. Let's do a good thing. Don't copy mine. I didn't even look at yours. I feel like you did. No. Just okay, then I'm going to go first. In case you try to steal it. Ah, uh, fine. I always have to come up with something anyways. Okay. So this past weekend, I went to my 20-year high school reunion. Uh, gross. I'm so old. That was awesome. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was at this winery in Madeira. Won't say a name. Um, the venue was cool. Yes, you can, you can say that. No. We can gripe. Mm, we shouldn't. It's not nice. Okay. It just it was not good. Well, the venue was cool. The venue was super cool. The food was good. The music was pretty cool. Right. But the alcohol. Was not good. No. I I dumped some of mine out. Yeah. It's just amazing how you can have zero. Like the wine, tequila, vodka, beer, seltzer. Nothing was good. Nothing was good. The water. Water was on point. So that's that's a good thing. Right. This is our good thing. The water was good. It, it was, was in good bottles. Thing. Well, the reunion was good because <laughs> I'm realizing that the only people I've ever kept in contact with through high school are my friend Valerie and my friend Christina. And then I realized when I was there that, yeah, they're kind of the only two people I really want to keep in touch with from high school. Um, I mean, who showed up? Like, there are some people I went to, like kindergarten through high school with that I would love if they would have showed up and I could have said hi but the people who were there I'm just like I don't know any of, I don't know any of these people you know um, but it was really nice catching up with like Christina because I haven't seen her I think since her wedding yeah and that's I, the only time I've ever met her yeah was her wedding and I I, for, I forgot how funny she is <laughs> so that was nice you forget I, you forget how funny your friends can be when you're just going through the daily routines of being parents and adults yeah. and all that stuff. And then when you just get to hang out with your friends, yes, you get to find out how kind of adorable and funny they can really be. Yes. And she made the mistake of inviting us to go see her in Utah. So we'll We're be gonna there. Go. <laughs> we'll go. All right. What you got this oh, week? Yeah, that was, my mine was similar. Mine was more of, um, I got, you know, I got to hang out with, Valerie's husband, John. I got to hang out with him. And I've mentioned him before that we have very, we have very completely different outlooks on life. Uh, Completely different. Yet we can be really good friends. Yeah. And and I really enjoy that. Like we, I don't think we agree on much. I think the only thing we really agree on is West Coast IPAs. (laughs) That's not true. No, a real, I mean... 100% 100% agree on. Oh, okay, Other yeah. stuff we agree on, but we still have different opinions yeah. of why we like it and all that kind of stuff. We discuss that kind of stuff a lot. And I super enjoy that because it becomes a conversation that's not a debate or an argument. Right. It's just a conversation. Yeah. Kind of like what we're trying to, you know, spark here with what we're doing here. And I got to be Sarah's plus one. 
So I got to be arm candy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Chubby fat guy, chubby, <laughs> chubby white guy hanging out. <laughs> uh, it was fun, though. Drinking beer. Yeah. Well, trying to. I had to pour it out. And then I'm excited for next week, and we get to party again. We're going to go do some more stuff, so we'll talk <sighs> about that next time. I know. Okay, because that'll probably be our good thing there. I call uh, it an yeah. event. I call it an yeah, advance. Can, all right, that's fine. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that's kind of our good things that are going on. Yeah. That happened over this last week. That was short for me. I kept kept down to one thing. Why? I don't know. That was my big thing this week. That was a good thing. Yeah, it was. All right. All right, right, what are we doing next? Uh, Next. Advise Advise me not. not. We're going to talk about something. Yes. We're going to talk about community involvement. Wow, that sounds too serious. Oh, community involvement. That sounds too cheesy. Keep, Keep going. Community involvement. The best part is <laughs> all three of those are perfect. <laughs> but me trying to get you to do it again, you always do it differently, so they all sound so cool. Like so, maybe I'll pull that one out oh, as no. a as a segment. Oh gosh, no. Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about community involvement. This is something that um, an old acquaintance of mine, friend of mine, I can say that I uh, worked with him for. Uh, a little while he put it through our social media and says community involvement and I was like because we asked for suggestions yeah. and and somebody I worked with um, years ago in Tacoma Washington he threw that out there so I was like hey let's let's use it and we don't know where it's going to go from here all right I have a question for you what do you think community involvement is uh, being involved in the community all right I'm gonna need a little more specific well that's kind of the that I think I think that's what this discussion is going to be about because to me, community involvement doesn't mean you have to be part of a PTA or you need to be out there, you know, helping somebody campaign to vote. I mean, you don't have to be part of any council or anything like that. Community involvement could be just seeing a garbage can and pushing it over to your to your neighbor, waving and saying hi to your neighbor. You don't have to know them personally or agree with them or hang out with them on a personal level but I feel like that's community involvement because we're so we've become so secluded yeah and especially in like some communities you can be really stuck in your townhouse or your house and the the more you don't hang out with other parents but your kids hang out with other people's kids yes so when did we when did you become not part of the community anymore Man, if you talk about that community, I feel like I have failed on that level. So, like, our kids have a good amount of friends. And, I like, I know parents, but I haven't hung out with any of the parents, like, ever. We only got one kid left in high school. Like, I feel like I missed the boat for the first two. I mean, and this one I haven't really tried, so. Wow. So, oh, I was trying to look three. at this. Like, just because <laughs> two kids get along doesn't mean the parents are going to, like, be... Yeah. Like besties. But I didn't even like attempt. There, were, I mean, like Moriah's mom. I feel like we, if she oh, was still sure. mature, I feel like we could have hanging out, oh, hung out, sure. and done things. And we did um, a couple times. Yeah. But I feel like community involvement is is like when your community, when your town, when your people that you want to be a part of is doing something, you should show up to something. Like, because I feel like, how do you know what your community is if you're never out there? Even if it's like just showing up to a farmer's market once a week or just, like, doing something so that you know what your neighbor's face looks like or you know what, like, someone in your community looks like. Because there's so many times, we live in, like, a complex, there's so many people, I'm like, that's a new person. I know because I'm out here way too much, and I know I've never seen your face before. Not that I'm nosy or anything. But I was like, I'll, I drove in today, and I said, where's the guy who always exercises in the garage? Where- oh, that was two doors over? No, the one that's like in the corner over there. He used to always pull oh, his yeah. car out and exercise. There's like two kids in the garage. I was like, You're yeah, I new? think he moved. Yeah, yeah. So I just feel like the point where, to me, to be involved in your community again, it's not always like you have to join a group or something. It's more no. of like it'd be cool to walk out your door and be like, I know, I recognize your face. I don't know your name. I guess I could one day, but, but at I least mean, recognize I, who you yeah, are. And it's not like you have to. It's I don't think we push people to go 
know somebody's name or right. you know it's like we don't know that's going to happen no uh, but yeah I was I just wrote down my little note says just do stuff like <laughs> seriously there's there's always doesn't matter where you're at in what community um, there's stuff yes. going on there's farmers markets there's community music there's uh, there's something going on in your community. Food yeah. trucks is a big deal in some of the more uh, populated yeah. areas. But there's still, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's little, little concerts that go on in parks. There's people trying. Yes. So whether you want to be that person that's putting on events, that's awesome. But support that person. Right. By just, just showing up. Yeah. It, just show up. You'll you'll see some familiar faces. Um or you can sit in the corner. Right. And just enjoy it. Yes. You don't, I mean, I have less anxiety with a very large group of people than I do with a small group of people because I don't have to know them for more than 15 minutes. Yes. You know, um, so community, I guess that's community involvement. Um, yeah. And then it's also like community just doesn't have to be like your neighbors it could be like what are you really into and what's that community like and then can you go do that because i feel like we have been forced into this gaming community by scooter just kidding kind of but we're in this gaming community and i think being part of it when well granted we put on a crap ton of things but part of it's also showing up to showing up just showing up and saying hi because i get don't always enjoy going but I know that that's part of our community that we've built in our building. So, gotta show up and support people in what they're doing. I think that's a big part about community involvement. Yeah, that is, I mean, that's the toughest part about, I think, anything. I've said that, I think, multiple times, maybe even on here. But it, showing up is the hardest part of anything you're going to do. Yeah. I mean, we talk about going to the gym. Like, show up. Now you got to be there. Right. You know, but getting there, you'll find a million reasons why you can't go. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't really prepare a lot for, <laughs> for this. I just, have, I just wrote three questions. How do you become more involved in community? Do you currently do things that are like community involvement based? And then can you, can you physically, mentally, emotionally go do things that are community based? Do you have it in you to go do that? Is that something that you want to do in life? Because if, if you don't, that's okay too. Like if you just sure. like, don't, I don't want to be part of community. I'm cool in my little bubble with the people I know and that's it. Then do that. But do you have the ability to go out there and do something different today and go be part of the community for five minutes for a so, whole event? So you're saying, okay, so, and I'm not going to, I mean, I, we can talk about how we do it, um, but I think the question, if anybody's listening, would be like, how do they? Right. Right. So when you, you mentioned just, or just hanging out with your close friends and that's totally fine. Well, that's community involvement. True. That's your community. Yeah. Um, it, that's your village. Yes. That's your, that is a community. So whether it's only one or two or three people more right. than you one right. more, any more than you yes is a community yes let's just just look at it that way so make the time to spend time with them right again that's the hardest thing showing up yeah um sending a message just because yeah you know um so that's on the smaller um smaller number it's just as important right uh, sometimes even more important uh because it's more intimate, uh, but then on a larger scale, how? Right. How would they find those things? And for God's sakes, look at your look at your dot govs, your dot orgs. Like, follow. I know papers, newspapers are such like a. I mean, they still exist. They're there, but there are so. And we're lucky because we're in Sacramento, and there's so many things that are out there to do. But we even in our little community, we there's like a local. Um, online blog and so they post about things that are happening all the time yeah it's, it's a buzz yeah <laughs> so look at those i mean what if you're not into social media that's totally fine because you yeah. don't have to be but they do have websites that represent pretty much everything that we're talking about yep. uh your local online newspaper yeah there's usually somebody out there representing and doing stuff so that's on the non-social media end yep and then there's other groups um I'm not much of a Reddit person, but they do have some of those things in Reddit where you can be part of a community there. Um, Meetup. 
stay away from the toxicity if you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, Meetup.com. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's 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 plug them because realistically, uh, Meetup is a an unsung hero for me at least when it comes to local community involvement because you can pick the stuff you like to do right and there's usually a meetup group that has that exact same or if they don't make your own the cool thing about meetup too is that i no, i hope i'm not confusing this confusing this with another one but they tell you things that are in your community even that aren't in your interest like you can just see a bunch of things oh, exactly. that are happening in your community and be like i never thought i wanted to go do this but maybe oh, i want to sure. try that and go but we're talking like we're talking stuff for like hackers lab right. um has is is on meetup um small business owner meetup yeah all the way down to like ice cream social meetup yep. if people love ice cream uh but just as a small example there wasn't a very good um like dungeons and dragons and role playing game uh, community here in Sacramento. Now, people were playing the game back when I, I wanted to go play again. This was 2016. Yeah. Uh, so I started my own on meetup.com uh, with just a few other people that I kind of knew. And now there's like 2,600 members. Yeah. And they're doing stuff. They're meeting up and they're doing stuff and they're playing. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. So, and it, meetup will. People, it's people looking for these things. So, and I know there's other stuff like the small business one. I'm part yeah. of that. Um, and I know that you're part of a, well, we both are, I guess, part of a whiskey group. Yeah. Like if you want to try out whiskey, they have those. They yeah. have, in Sacramento, they have Sacramento Beer Socials mm-hmm. on Meetup. So, and they have like, gosh, 5,000 members. Yeah. So if you're looking at going to a brewery or trying out a new beer, they're usually having a social thing going on. Like, at least once or twice a week somewhere. Yep. And it's not, the cool thing is it's not one person running the whole thing. Yeah. It's just a place to put like interests in an event. Yeah. So that you can show up if you want. If you don't, go to a different one. Yes. Yeah. Or find a different thing you're interested in. And if your interests change, then start, move to a different meetup group. It's not that big a deal. So I think that's the second thing. Um, if you want to do more community involvement, what would we another um, how to? Um, I think, and it kind of depends on what your little community looks like already. Like who's in your bubble? But I mean, I always think be willing to like expand your community a little bit. Like even if it's just one extra person. Like who who are your community hanging out with? If you want to expand it, like who are your community hanging out with? What are they doing? Maybe you're like, I never thought that I want to go be involved in this, but you are, and now I have a buddy to go try it with, so let's go do it together. Like ask your community, whoever they are, like what what are you interested in? How would we do that? That was like, or I think um, a good segue I'm looking at is like uh, kind of segue is not just joining these group, but organize one. Oh, that too. I mean, you know, show up for your friends. I was saying kind of go up the level. Mm -hmm. If there isn't a group, what is it? The see a need, fill a need kind of thing. If there isn't a group uh, that's doing something that's similar to what you're doing, there's probably other people out there thinking or feeling the same way. That's true. So click the button, make one. Yeah. Become an organizer. Yes. On a meetup group. God forbid it's on Facebook. You can do it on Facebook, too. (laughs) Um, Not that I hate Facebook, but I hate Facebook. (laughs) Uh, Instagram's a decent way of doing it. You can't organize very well in there, but I really want to say meetup.com. I know it's weird like we were sponsored by them, but we're not. Uh, But make that one. Like, if you're really into... uh, Pick something a little obscure for us, like... Screen printing. Oh, that's good. You're, you're into screen printing sticker t-shirts. Collecting. Yeah, sticker collecting. <laughs> or it's like, go meetup.com slash wherever you're at. Say you're in Ohio, you're in Cleveland. Cleveland sticker collecting. Yep. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, wow. I've always wanted to see what goes on with sticker collecting because yeah. I have a collection of them. So uh, the next thing you know, you're at an expo for sticker collecting and you're like, how did I get here? Yeah. I mean, or the next thing you know, somebody that joined your group is now putting on a whole expo right. for sticker collecting and you were that stepping stone that they needed to get to that point. True. And all you did was click a button and call something 
sticker collecting. Yes. I got stuck on stickers. But <laughs> you said no, obscure. For, that's just another, well, obscure just like, that's, I don't even think, know if that's on Meetup because I don't, dip, obscure is relative. It's a matter of perspective too, yes. right? Like D&D and RPGs to a lot of people is like, that's obscure. Right. But that's what we organize. Yeah. So look at it that way. Uh, so that's it's, it's a different level. Now there's other. Let's go even further. If you really want to be involved, it's super easy to be part of a. Uh, if you got, especially if you have kids, uh, you can get on a school board of some sort. Oh my sort. gosh! Anyone you want, a PTA, a school board, an association, you can be a board member of basically anything in a school district if you really how, want to. Yeah. If I mean, realistically, like, like how do we make changes? How do we get more involved? Is like if you're frustrated with some sort of system. Uh, screaming out loud doesn't go very far, but getting involved does. Right. I mean, if you want to, what is it? If you want to make a change, be the change that whatever. That sounds like a t-shirt. Yeah, but I'm sure that somebody said that. If you want to make a change, be the change. Uh, because we talk about very like community involvement. Let's talk about, to me specifically, not me specifically, but the, my interpretation of community involvement. What is community? Well, you're part of community. So if you don't like your community, you don't like yourself. You're part of the community. It's kind of like, oh, society is doing this. It's like, you're we society. are society. Right. So if you're frustrated with what's going on in society or in your community, well, be the change. Yeah. Don't, you know, force other people to change for you. Right. Be the change. So I think that's on a much higher, different level. Yeah. But if you're going to be the change, get involved. Yeah. I mean, if you're really, if you're into politics and you're frustrated with your politicians and stuff like that, go. Yes. Don't yell at them, but have a discussion with them. Yeah. Like, write to them. They are tangible. Yes. Like, you, you think they're not. And there's some in the secret room. I was like, no, they're your neighbor. Yes. They literally are your neighbor. Yeah. So remember their people first and then go out there. Now, some, some of them very corrupt, true. But some of them really did get involved to make change. Right. You know, um, they're working with what tools they have. Yeah. So that's on a different level. That's why I was saying how to get involved. There's a bunch of levels. And then you said, do you? Do you? You personally do will you, just go. Do you, boo-boo. Do you, boo. Um, do you personally get involved in your community? Do you? Not enough. Well, what um, do you mean not enough? So, I mean... For what I feel, where I feel like I should be at in our community involvement, I don't like to interact with a lot of people. Mm. I like my, like, five people, and I'm okay with that number. Um, but I do a lot of things. So, like, I am involved. Like, I know our neighbors because I'm out at walks all the time. I know our community decently enough because I go, we go to everything that happens in this community. We attend all the things. So, I'm, like, I'm out there, but, like, my auditing community, I'm not active enough in it. And I oh, know I, I should be more involved. Like, I need to be the one to build that community in Sacramento. But again, I only like about five people. So it's really hard for me to create that community that I need to be a part of. So that makes sense. So do you. Unless, especially in your... Especially if you run your own business. Yeah. Right? That's... If you run your own business of any sort, we're talking... Even if it's your side hustle yeah. or for fun or it's craft making and, and you have a little tent that goes, okay, you need to be involved in your community. Yes. Otherwise, you won't survive and it'll not be fun anymore. Yes. It's just a lot of work and no return. So that makes sense. So when you're talking about your auditing community, and I don't know, we never, we never really discussed what we, what we really do for a living. Have we done that? I don't think so. We're only on like episode fifteen, yeah, and I don't fine. remember anything. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, we did. We we're running businesses. I don't know if we've got specifics, but we about running businesses. But yours, your primary one is auditing, and there's a lot of people in your community that really look up to you. you I know? don't know about that, but well, um, they come to you they a lot. Ask me a lot of questions. Your phone is <laughs> blown up all day, and it's not auditing it's not clients that's true that's true it's other auditors your peers yeah that are trying to get some sort of assistance or opinion yeah. on something so when that happens frequently that usually means people are looking 
up to you for advice, experience, knowledge, um, those types of things. So I don't know. Uh, look at it that way. If you're out there and you're in a community and you're getting a lot of questions, like you're building jewelry and right. that's what you're doing for fun or for your full business. And then you have a lot of other jewelry makers or wannabe jewelry makers asking you opinions on, Hey, how did you get this to work? How'd you get this marketing to work? How'd you, get... Hey, that means the community's asking you to be more involved. Right. Right. It's just organically, it's asking you to. Yeah. So look at it that way. Yeah. So do you, do you listen yeah. to your community when they, when they need you to be more involved? Right. Yeah. That's a hard one. Cause no. <laughs> Well, but that, that's the goal. But that's the third part point that you said. Can well, you? Yeah. I can. Um, <laughs> but that's the goal, right? It's the goal. And, and the issue is, especially when you run your own business, it's always like, well, now that it's the end of the day and I don't have time because now I have to do, I have family stuff that I want to do. And it's like, so when's the time? But would being more involved in a community help you in the long run in anything? Is that worth your effort and your time to grow you as a person? Always. Right. I can't think of one time where I've been more involved and it turned out terrible and it made me less of a better person. Less of a better person? <laughs> are you saying... <laughs> what are you saying? This doesn't sound right. Are you saying that if... When you weren't in... No. The more I was involved, the, the better, better I felt. Yeah, you went on the negative side. Yeah, but it made less sense when I said it that way. But I can't think of a time when I've been more involved and then I was like, oh, this is crap. I don't want to do this ever again. Like, I, I felt terrible. Like, especially in, because I feel like if I'm involved in my community, I'm doing the things that I like to do. Because other, right. otherwise, it's, why would I do it? So, like, in those moments, if you really want to be involved in your community, you're going out there to do things, hopefully, that you like to do. And it should make you feel pretty good. True. And if it doesn't, maybe you don't actually enjoy that. Yeah, find something else. Right. Like if, yeah, if it's if it's exhausting, not just I mean, some things that you go out there and do in the community are physically exhausting. Yeah. Right. Like you're setting up a booth, or you're playing softball. Right. Or you're you know going to yoga or whatever it is. Um. That if it's just physically exhausting, and you had a, and at the end of the day, you're tired, but you're like mentally and emotionally like learned something yeah. that Dan felt like oh I got to see uh, Barbara out there and she was hilarious and oh man I haven't seen yeah. Julian forever where am I coming up with these names I don't know I was going to say something about it but I was going to move on I was like I don't know either one of those um, I don't <laughs> uh, but look at that and that's community involvement that doesn't mean you have to be super friends with Barbara and Julie Right. that just means you got to see them. They got to see you. Positive experience. Community and society can slowly mend itself. Yes. In that aspect. Because you're doing something common. Yeah. Man, when, when my the, my other gym, when they closed and I lost that community of ladies right. that I worked out with, that I, I mean, I knew that I loved it from the first day that I went. But when I lost my little community, I was like heartbroken. I was like, oh. My little community's gone. It was so sad. It's like, and then I, and I, that's the moment I was like, it wasn't, it wasn't draining. It wasn't hard to go do. It was like, that's why I know it was something I re truly enjoyed right. because now I'm so sad. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. That does happen. I know. So I was like, can you? And then out with the people out there, if you're listening to this, all one and a half of you, um, <laughs> do you have the time? Right. Um, and... You ask yourself that. Do I have the time? You have the time. For sure. If you've watched more than a show, let's be real. Because we you have I, some time. Yeah, it's kind of a discussion that we have with each other and, of course, with our peers and in our community involvement and the communities that I've run and, and organize. I mean, there's a reason why we say it's make this it's because uh, our company is time to tabletop and i say make time to tabletop right. it, you have to make the time and that doesn't mean you're creating a 25th hour of the day no that means your priorities need to be changed so and i'm not saying out there pointing fingers at anybody out there specifically i'm just saying if you're feeling like you don't have enough time in the day 
to do something that you enjoy. Right. Your priorities are skewed. Right. And maybe it is watching TV. Maybe you don't have time to do that. And maybe that's something you really get, like, rejuvenated by, like, just watching this one show. Right. And you're missing it all the time because your priorities might be a little skewed. Yeah. Uh, Some of us might be a poet and, like... Right, I don't have time to sit down and do that. I don't have time to draw a drawing, or I don't have a time to play music, or I don't have a time to go to jujitsu, yeah. or I don't have time to go to yoga, or that doesn't fit in the schedule. It doesn't fit in the schedule because you didn't put in the schedule. Right. It's not that it doesn't fit. You just didn't put a spot for it. Yes. And that's a hard reality to face, too. Because there's so many people are just like, I just don't have the time. And you're like... Are you sure? Like, how, literally, how much time are you spending scrolling, do, you going through the scroll hold? How long have you been staring at your phone when you could have been doing something that you enjoyed? Because, realistically, nobody enjoys scrolling through their phone. They do it because it's just, like, mindless stuff. Nothing up there is like, oh, this is mine, like, earth-shattering. Like, you have the time if you really think about what you're spending your time on. But a lot of people, instead of, like, sitting down and saying this is what I'm spending my time on. I'm realizing I'm wasting time doing this. I could be doing things that I enjoy. They don't do that. I know how much time I'm wasting sitting on the couch watching TV. I just haven't found what I enjoy yet to spend my other time on. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's another thing. It's like you haven't found, if, if you haven't found what it is you like yet, if you're scrolling through TikTok, oh. you're not going to find it. No. You're not going to find your next passion in life by scrolling through social media. I, right. I mean, maybe. No, I think you find that passion and then you go to social media to find that passion. Oh, to like deep dive? Yeah. That that I've done many times. Um, but I've never been scrolling through and go, wow, you know what? I think I'm going to be a chef. You know why? Because I love this picture of food. And this is really <laughs> funny TikTok about food. I, I don't think that's an inspiration. Mm. Um for anybody's passion. I think you get the passion first and then you find it on social media and then go down that scroll hole just yeah. on that one subject. Just let your um, listening devices hear you talk and they'll put whatever you want on your Oh my gosh. On your don't, don't even talk about that. Um, that's a whole nother. Maybe we'll talk about that <laughs> sometime. But yeah, I, I really look at that and every single phone that you have, let's, here's a challenge to put out to people if, if you're listening uh, look at your phone and actually go through your uh, what do they call it screen time on your iPhone yeah. I don't know what it is on Android I've never looked but it's there yeah it'll tell you what apps and mm-hmm. what stuff you spend the most time on yes you'll be shocked I don't think you'll be shocked at which one's on the top but I think you'll be shocked by how much, how time? much actual time you right. spend on it and then you tell yourself this is the next thing it's called to me it's an excuse the next thing you're going to tell yourself was like, well, I can do that while I'm right. doing. I was like, can you? I mean, yeah, but you probably, the stuff that you like to do, you probably could spend 30 to 40% more time doing that. Right. If you didn't do that. Yes. I'm not saying turn off your phone. I'm not saying. I am. Turn off your phones. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. saying that. I'm just kidding. Because, <laughs> I mean, I, my phone's always on. So I, I'm, I'm not going to say that, but. And I'm not the best at monitoring me being on social media and and not. But realistically, you have the time. Yes. Um, If you really, it's and I'm just talking about screen time, but if you clock the time that you're just sitting on the couch and doing nothing, you could be doing something that you enjoy. Right. Which could be sitting on the couch. Right. It totally could. But don't say I don't have time for learning how to knit. Right. So you can sit on the couch and knit. <laughs> There's so many things like... <laughs> or read. Uh, anything. I mean, oh, wow, I wish I had more time to read. Yeah. You do. Right. You would just have to turn the TV off and put the phone down for a little bit or get a Kindle and I mean, put it on your phone. Or, I Kindle mean, app. I... There are certain things like I should, we should find more time to do something. Well, oh, there's we no... Morph yeah. this. Listen to... Take the time. You morph this whole category. Uh, maybe. And as we get back to community involvement, make the time. No, that's, Just well, that's where we're coming from. <laughs> right. I was like, that, that's where we're coming from. Is right. If you find your passion, let, and if, let's say it is knitting. If you find your passion, you want to learn more about knitting, guess what? 
you're going to go out and find a community yes. of people that know how to knit. Yes. Next thing you know, you have community involvement. Where does it go from there? Fact. You know, so it's kind of that stepping stone of find something you like to do. And if you like it, go out there and do it. And next thing you know, you're involved in the community. Yes. No matter what it is. From weightlifting to, what would it be? To whiskey. Yeah. Whiskey clubs to knitting to comic books to yes. sticker collecting. There's a thing out there for everyone. Yeah. And it's somebody else is out there. I mean, it's, there's well over 7 billion of us. Yeah. You'll find someone. So, yeah. Well, good job. I like this. This was good. This one's enjoyable. Yeah. We have one more thing. What is it? Shout out! Ow! 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 Shout, Shout out! out! Woo! That, that was really good. That was... Okay. I mean, I didn't even do the special effect. That was, that was all her. <laughs> she did that on her own. The next Bobby McFerrin. What is that? Exactly. Oh, no. The is that the guy reference. from a... Uh... Uh, no, no. Uh, I know what you're doing. You're thinking of the guy from Police Cat. Yes. Now, Bobby McFerrin was Don't Worry, Be Happy. Oh. Did he do that? He wrote all songs just by making noises. Oh, that's crazy. No instruments. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Don't Worry, Be Happy was no instruments. Uh, I don't know. You didn't know that? No. It was all him slapping his body and... Oh, that's cool. Nah, I didn't know. <laughs> Listen, I was born in the 80s, all right? <laughs> by the time the 80s were done, I was six. I don't know. All right, all right. But maybe you should spend more time listening to music and reading a book. <laughs> it's not my passion. <laughs> that is true. Books make me sleepy. I me try too. real hard. I'm trying to get a certification, can't get to the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you finished. Yeah, yeah, you have a master's degree. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hmm. All right. Yeah, we're in our shout outs. We got. All... I, didn't, I didn't write anything down, so you have Just, to go first. Okay, I will go first. Yay! Because I actually wrote something down this time. Okay. Um. I have to give a shout out to uh, an acquaintance that I made years ago when I worked down in the Bay Area at Apple. And when I resurfaced my passion for like guitars and pedals, he's been that guy that I kind of bounce things off of. So I have to give a big shout out to his name's Johnny. And his handle on Instagram is, I think it's Offset Johnny. Does he want people to know that? Uh, follow him. No. Oh. <laughs> Does he want people to follow him? It's not. Why would you be on Instagram <laughs> if you don't want people to follow you? I don't know. It's not a private account. Um, <laughs> uh, but very passionate about offset guitars. Mm. That's why it's called Offset Johnny, um, which I've, I've never owned one. I don't really, they're not my thing. Offset guitars are not my thing. Uh, but he's also into pedals and playing music and plays in some bands and stuff like that. So he's been kind of that when I'm excited about something. You know, I can throw it at him and he gets excited and he goes, look what I did. I go, Ooh, that's super cool. So I have to give a shout out to him because he's, he's, uh, been available. Nice. Yeah. It's going. It's going. I'll have to give a shout out to, um, a being who won't ever hear this podcast and her name is a uh, ginger. Ginger has been. Don't, don't say her name too loud. She, so we have a dog at our house right now, other than Ginger, and her name is Amari. And we are dog sitting for Amari until tomorrow. And Ginger is an old, cranky lady. And she is doing her best to be nice to this little puppy. And it's taking all of her ability and love to not just snap. <laughs> and so I have to give a shout out to Ginger for still being as smiley as she can be. <laughs> it is so cute because this, this dog that we're dog sitting is, it's just a, it's a puppy. Yes. So, um, just she just has a lot of energy. Yes. And wants to play fetch and wants to hang out with you and follow you around and do stuff. And we're like, cool, that's a puppy. She was Ginger when she was a puppy. Yeah. Oh, Ginger was like that not that long ago. Right. Like before two she years lost ago. her sight. Yeah. Yeah. Before she started going blind. She, and then, um, uh, but yeah, she just has a lot of energy. And Ginger's like, no. No. Today's not the day. <laughs> I get to choose when the energy in this house goes up. Don't walk by me. Don't be happy. Don't jump on my humans. Don't touch the ball. Nothing. <laughs> get out of my house. <laughs> it's so funny because she's, she's not aggressive about it, but every once in a while, she's like, no. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, to your corners. Everyone be nice. <laughs> Everybody lay down. It's a lot of be nice. Be nice. Yeah. Your tail's not wagging the right way. <laughs> Just know that it's like if if you if you want to have a toddler in your house for ten to fifteen years, oh. get a dog. Yes, like 
That's, I mean, that it's it's having a toddler. Yes. For as long as they're around. Yeah. Yeah, they they don't. They're not like a cat. The no. cat kind of just like is a is an angry roommate. <laughs> you know that says, "Hey, you want to hang out? <laughs> All right, cool." You know, so it's it's different. Yes. Um. So just know that. Yes. But yeah, if you're ever looking at getting a dog. That's that's what we're going out. But yeah, shout out to Ginger yep. for having such patience. <laughs> She's doing great. They're both doing great. I know. I they love really these are. dogs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think we we beat that in the ground, and hopefully it came back around to um, our community involvement. Yes. Wait, can I? Can we tell the story oh. how we met the dog? Because I feel like that's also community, uh, community involvement. Community involvement. Yeah. Let's let's do an offset back there. Do you want to tell it? You want me to tell it? Uh, you can start. Okay. So, um, our son was outside and he's like, mom, I found, he texts me. He says, I found a dog outside. And I said, what do you mean you found a dog? He's like, I'm sitting here on my skateboard and a dog comes up to me. It's got no collar on it. It just has a harness on. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Well, does it have like a little thing that says where he lives? And he says, no. So we go outside. And there's this adorable freaking Corgi who plays fetch with the stick because like, why not? And so I call, have Scooter come out and I'm like, uh, there's a dog out here and it's very well taken care of. You can tell like it's a gorgeous dog. And so Scooter, uh, puts a leash on her and then the little dog just walks herself back to her house cause she knows where she lives. And so we go there or Scooter and CJ go there and yeah. And we go up to the front door and the front door's open. And I was like, Oh, so, you know, and they, they have a nice little gated little place inside, you know, inside the house. They got water and food and, and they even have like a, uh, I don't know what brand it is, but they even have like a webcam yeah. and everything to watch the dog. And I was like, oh, she's really taken care of. This yes. dog is really taken care of. So I'm like, I'm inside the house. It's open. <laughs> and I'm like, hello, hello. And I'm knocking. I was like, oh, okay. So nobody's here. So I was like, okay. So I close the door. Uh, we come back to the house. We take a picture of the dog. We print out a picture. Um, and then we put our information on the back. And I walk back over there to give them that piece of paper and I knock no response and then I open the door because I know it's unlocked <laughs> and I hear somebody go hello and I was like oh sorry I, I'm not trying to break it you know I didn't say that but I was like I we found your dog and I was gonna leave this for you and and she's like what oh my gosh so they came over got the dog um so in that whole interaction they were very very gracious humans and they brought us even like uh what was it? Edible what the, arrangement. Ed, edible arrangements <laughs> the next day and stuff. And I was like, this is great. Yes. Uh, but uh, we offered to say, hey, if you ever need somebody to watch the dog or anything like that. So um, they asked us the other day and I was like, well, yeah. Yes. Have her come over. So she's been here just like a day. Yeah. Only for like, it's you know, 24 to 36 hours, something like that. Yeah. And she's been a pleasure. Uh, but there's community involvement right there. Right. If you see a stray dog. Right check it, it might be your neighbor's dog yeah like, well why is it a big deal to you know call animal enforcement i'm like, like no just it's not just aggressive ask just, just if you know your neighbors you'd know who just right. dog it is exactly and the only reason we didn't know is because they just moved into the area yeah. so it was like we didn't recognize the dog because yeah. most of the dogs that are hanging around here we recognize yes. them right and we have other dogs who are like hey that's so-and-so's dog we should probably tell mm -hmm. them you know and that doesn't mean you have to know that person personally and yeah. go have drinks with them. And We don't know anyone's names. We know their no. dog's name. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we know their dogs and we know where they live and yeah. we they're everybody you can wave to. Yes. And so we just know who we are. Yes. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's community involvement right yeah. there. See? Well done. All right. All right. Well, well, thanks. Until next time. Bye. Okay, bye. Do you shudder internally when you witness a Karen going off on some innocent service industry worker? Do you consume bad fan fiction and or have tattoos from your favorite TV shows? Do you strain to listen in on the awkward date stories of strangers? Is your family the worst and you just don't want to feel alone? Then we might have the podcast for you. Cringe With Me, the podcast where we dig up the cringiest articles, questions, and tidbits of human culture to review with you, our listeners, so you can cringe with me. Look up Cringe With Me on your favorite podcast directory. Everyone.